Welcome to Scott's Thinker Suggestions, where I take a look at some pieces of media that friends and or family have suggested that I review and decide to review it. Let me readjust this a wee bit. Look, no hands! <laughs> it's moving without any hands! It's a miracle! <laughs> shame that John Wick 5 is being made, but I'll explain why that's a pity in, in just a few moments. So, my friend Brooks Gallinghouse has suggested that after he and I completed watching John Wick 1, 2, 3, and 4, he wanted me to make a review video. You know the YouTuber I'm talking about, my beloved friend who's catching up to 900 subscribers! That young man I collaborated with, with, uh, that disturbing video I made! Oh, oh, stop! You're scaring me! The disturbing video about reacting to that guy who had a serious case of self-insert fetish. <laughs> okay, moving on! And so, this is it. This is me talking about John Wick. So, what do I think of the John Wick series? It's pretty exciting, it's great quality, however, it's not without its flaws, but what is John Wick all about? The overarching story of the John Wick series tells a story about the titular hitman who is trying to live a life of retirement with his loving wife until she tragically passed away from cancer, and the last remnant he has of his wife, apart from some photos and a video, is this dog that has been given to him as a late gift from his wife who's now passed on. John seems content enough living out the rest of his retirement with his dog until one day he notices a punk and his friends come up to him and threaten to want to take his car. John catches on to their mean-spirited intentions and drives away. Unfortunately, John is then brutally attacked in his own home by these punks and their friends and this punk steals steals John Wick's car, and sadly, killed off his dog. He chose... poorly. Now, this punk seems content enough being in a privileged position of being the son of a Russian mobster who knows about John Wick. Unfortunately, the Russian mobster father hears about what his punk son had done and is realizing, oh no, we're in big trouble. And in trouble they are, as John Wick goes out on a vengeance quest to avenge his dog. John Wick gets out his artillery and steps out of his retirement to go on a revenge quest. What I will say right off the bat is that the first John Wick film has one of the strongest character introductions I've seen in filmmaking. The way it uses the film transitions, which can be quite a blessing when done rightly, the way it's written and the contrast to what we were shown beforehand with John Wick intending to be a loving man, yet implied to have blood on his hand. This one scene where the Russian father has to establish to his son how hard he's goofed up and describing how much of a danger John Wick can actually be. It's a really powerful introductory scene because the way the words that are being used to describe John Wick you would usually associate with a villain and yet here they're being associated with our main protagonist which means our protagonist has built such a fearsome reputation that the first film isn't so much about the hero trying to avoid the villains, it's the villains trying to avoid their inevitable fate with the main protagonist. So that's kind of an interesting subversion of how things work. And there are implications of underground and underworld world build underworld building? Underworld building? <laughs> There is some implications of world building with the criminal underworld and the continental grounds, which is further established later on, especially with descriptions of the high table. Yet enough is described in the first film where there could be room for a sequel, but at the same time, the first film leaves off on a 
fairly conclusive note with an assassin who doesn't really know how to handle his grief properly, arguably, and decides to go out on a vengeance quest. And it's a story about letting your pride get the better of you. So it was like, fascinating in that way. As for the other John Wick films, I mean, a lot of people say that the first one's the best one because it's the most basic one. I think people usually say that anyway with uh, stuff like the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise and other stuff like that. Although you do get upset exceptions where um, there's some franchises where certain sequels are actually superior to their predecessors where the filmmakers actually improved from what they learned from in their first attempts in a certain franchise. But with John Wick, it's debatable as to which film is the definitive best one. If I'm to make a suspicious guess, it would think the consensual best film amongst the fans, I suspect, would be one of the first two. Maybe four. Maybe. It's the case of um, all these different things and there's so many uh, fun characters and great writing. You have John Wick played by Keanu Reeves of Matrix fame and John Wick's definitely elevated his career to the point where he's kept his long hair and bearded look as his public persona. It's kind of interesting how Keanu Reeves, he's introverted but he's a very charismatic introvert. <laughs> you can definitely even sense that with the, the film itself, even down to the way he says, yeah. <laughs> um, you've got other characters like Winston played by Ian McShane, this high-class person with very great voice. You've got this loyal butler who serves at the Continental Grounds. You've got the King of the Pigeons, played by Lawrence Fishburne, and he has a name, but let's be honest, we're all just gonna call him Morpheus anyway, because Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne were together in The Matrix, and so now they're in John Wick, so you put the pieces together, and yeah, they're, you're just gonna call Lawrence Fishburne's character Morpheus. <laughs> Somebody, please! Get this man a gun. And the action scenes throughout this entire franchise are really well done. I mean, just the sheer dedication to practical stunt work and the choreography and even when the fight scenes get drawn out and get too long which is a complaint with number three and number four you can still see there was a lot of hard work put into it and they use cgi sparingly and that's the sign of a really dedicated uh, film and you can definitely applaud the filmmakers on, on that kind of effort. But anyway, what would I think about the second, third, and fourth film? The second, third, and fourth film definitely expand on the world building, and with number two, the world building is set up in such a way to really have a payoff of consequences by the finale of chapter two. There's a moment where John Wick is chasing down a bad guy, and this bad guy is threatening to seize power in the underworld to such an extent that he can take over the entire world in a very oppressive way and John Wick has to stop him. But unfortunately, this bad guy has ventured into continental ground where it's forbidden to kill each other, even for underworld standards. And this bad guy is gonna stay there permanently to do what he wants to do. And John Wick has to stop him somehow. How does he do it? Well... I won't spoil it, I'll let you watch it, but needless to say, this franchise definitely has consequences, and events from previous films definitely impact other films, although John Wick 3 is sadly the weakest film, because I wouldn't call the film terrible, but the plot is laid out in such a way that there are only a very few details in John Wick 3 that actually contribute to the overall plot as a whole. This is where the weaknesses of the franchise really start to leak out. You can definitely sense that with this franchise, it doesn't really seem like the kind of franchise where the director planned each film as he, uh, before filming them. It seems more like he improvised each installment as he went along. I mean, you could argue that style over substance can work with this whole franchise, and this show is definitely stylized with some gorgeous lighting and, and some really well done cinematography. However, John Wick 3 definitely suffers a bit with drawn out fight scenes, very few plot details that actually contribute to the plot in a significant way, and John Wick 3 actually ends on a point where it kind of makes watching John Wick 3 kind of pointless. You could pretty much skip from John Wick 2 to John Wick 4 and you wouldn't miss that much at all, which seems kind of a shame given how this franchise emphasized a lot about consequences and 
the the underworld and how everyone's coming out to get these people if they cross the line. Although, John Wick 4 certainly picked itself back up with actual consequences as well as actual payoffs. I mean, in John Wick 3, the Morpheus character was implied to get killed off, only to realize, nope, still alive. As well done as John Wick 4 is, there's still some fights in the draw a bit too long. And like John Wick 3, John Wick 4 has some occasional scenes where the plausibility of characters surviving certain scenarios gets increasingly more ridiculous. Like you watch John Wick 3 and John Wick 4 and you just think, how did this character survive falling out a building? Or how did this character survive practically snapping their neck on a staircase and then just getting back up to then get shot again only to get fight only to get bitten by that killer dog only to keep fighting and then there's another character who goes through the same thing and then I think if I'm not mistaken gets shot in the head and still keeps fighting? Like what? The plausibility which was very grounded in the first film gradually loses itself with third and fourth film which is kind of a shame really. I mean, I can understand inventive fight maneuvers like with the blind guy from Rogue One putting in some clever fight scenes in John Wick number four, John Wick chapter four rather, but just gets ridiculous. I mean, this franchise can be a, a wee bit humorous from time to time, but the plausibility of the presentation kind of lose itself. Although, I will say this. As a fan of Cowboy Bebop, I really appreciate the homage they give to that show with the finale of John Wick 4. The Cowboy Bebop influences are very apparent in the finale of number 4 without giving too much away. I would accept John Wick 5 if it was a prequel. That would make room for more action scenes and stuff like that. But here's the thing. John Wick 5 is implied to be a sequel, which seems kind of a shame because John Wick 4 4 managed to wrap up all loose ends in such a satisfying manner. But here's the thing, I would accept John Wick 5 if it was a prequel, but the fact that it's a sequel seems kind of a shame because John Wick 4 wrapped up all loose ends in such a satisfying manner. So what more could you possibly do with this character? I mean, his character arc's done. He's managed to settle the ghosts of his past. You'd better have a good reason to make John Wick 5 if you're going to play this out. There is going to be spin-off media involving a ballerina character as well as a spin-off something with Mel Gibson in it, so that should be interesting to see. So overall, how would I rank the John Wick franchise? The first, second, and fourth entries are pretty strong, yet like, very much like Shrek the Third, as my friend Brooks put it, John Wick 3 is definitely the weakest of the bunch. All the complaints I could have about this franchise can definitely be personified by John Wick 3. And yet, the work moments that still work, still work well. I mean, in John Wick 4, it gets a bit more reflective from time to time with John Wick entering an orthodox creed in order to get the chance to do a duel and he takes time to pause and to reminisce about the possibility that maybe he will see his wife again. Maybe. I rank the John Wick franchise a solid 9 out of 12. I would have happily given the John Wick franchise a 10 out of 12. Unfortunately, the third John Wick film definitely drags this franchise down a bit, so that definitely affects the overall ranking of the series, so it leaves me no choice but to take the ranking down a notch. That's my impression of Winston. <laughs> Tell them, Winston. Whoever watches this video, I'll comment them. I'll comment them all. <laughs> So what do you all think about the John Wick franchise? Let me know down below in the comments section below and we'll talk about the John Wick franchise and let me know your opinions about the upcoming John Wick 5 if you want to. You're welcome, Brooks. <laughs> Scott Stinker signing out. It has been an honor, sir.